because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. How do you explain that, a mighty wind? Always keeping people on a rope and saying, Yeah, yeah, live holy, this and this. Uh... For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. I watch pornography many times as well. I did sinful things as well. In these times, I was actually falling in sin. I must confess that as well. I did in secret. I just felt bad and I started sinning. I fell down. So in the week after, I did fall in pornography. I was disappointed. I fell once again in sin. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Of course I was sinning as well. Come on, think in your brains. Yes, I used ecstasy. I used cocaine. And of course people, I will tell you, I was still struggling in sin. Nothing changed. I must confess that as well. And For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. This is my story. And no one is going to have any excuse to believe Anthony's lies about me or about the ministry or about Elizabeth Elijah. You are looking at a liar, okay? When I show you this picture right here, this is a liar. Look at how I got to know him full of the Holy Spirit, and this is how he is now. Does this look like a man who got deliverance? I got delivered from my demons. How this young man turned away from the path of righteousness before my eyes, and is now present on YouTube to speak lies about me, slander, half-truths, and twisted truths. My story will reveal his motives, his hatred, covetousness, jealousy, envy, trickery, and deceitfulness, and how he gives me the blame for his sinful lifestyle and makes excuses for his sins, while all I did was look out for his soul for years. This is the truth in defense of Yahweh and Yahushua's A Mighty Wind Ministry, which is again being slandered and spoken evil of for no cause. Other than that, this is truly a holy ministry. And his goal to get out with his buddy is just like the rest of our enemies and what they have been doing to my pastor Elizabeth Elijah. And through the slander and the lies that they fabricate, they're trying to get you to believe that a mighty win is just a joke, that there is no holiness in this ministry. And they're trying to steal your faith in this manner. Uh, in the holy prophecies that were spoken through my pastor Elizabeth Elijah and everything else this ministry does to lead souls to Yahushua the Messiah or Jesus Christ. The enemies of a mighty wind want you to believe it's impossible to please God and obey him or live holy. Anthony is no longer Anthony and this is my story of how Anthony became Cain and why God has called him Cain. Because you're going to see me in a way you have never seen me before. And you're going to know a lot more about me that you have not known before. You're going to get to know me better. Especially the people that love the truth and that love me and that love this ministry and God himself. I think you will enjoy this video. I ask you to just please bear with me because this is not the easiest video to do. This is very personal stuff. But I have to do it to get the truth out. Anthony, I met him through a mighty good ministry and I got in touch with him and the first time we met physically he came for a visit and um, it was one of the most blessed days of my life. <laughs> there was such an anointing present and sin was so far that we just rejoiced the entire day in the Lord. The only thing we talked about was the Lord and our future plans to help this ministry to lead souls to Yahushua in the Netherlands. I love Anthony 
very much at the time. Both of us had issues struggling to really live holy, struggling with a past to try to haunt us continuously. You got to understand that Anthony came from a household in which he was under strict surveillance and rules by his bio dad and so much I believe there was even computer surveillance so that his bio dad downstairs could see every activity of Anthony on his computer and he kept a close eye on Anthony. He was like a dictator in that household. He could see Anthony committing sin on the internet. Anthony's sins that he struggled with were specifically sexual sins such as pornography and also this went so far that he had watched child porn. He used to watch child porn on the internet. His bio dad knew all this stuff and guess what? He never cared. As long as Anthony was in sin, everything was fine in that household. As soon as Anthony got in touch with the Mighty Men Ministry and Anthony started off on a path of holiness and turned away from his sins to the best of his ability, that is when his bio dad started to cause trouble for him. That is when all trouble and war broke loose in that household. Anthony was unequally yoked. He was suppressed by his bio dad. His bio dad is also the one that basically provided Anthony of other sins. Uh, he encouraged Anthony in his marijuana use. They even used that stuff together at one time. He took Anthony to Thailand and, and, and certain countries so Anthony could sin. He made sure that Anthony could fornicate with prostitutes. But there was even something that, w that went much further than that. And that is Anthony had a younger sister with whom he had had an incestuous relationship for years since they were very young. This has been going, this had been going on for years and there was like a strong soul tie and a bond between him and his biological system. Incest. And when I met Anthony, I saw in his eyes and in his character and in his personality what his sins had done to his life what it had done to his health, what it had done to his youth, what it has done to his spirit. On top of that, Anthony had a fascination for the occult. Anthony had a fascination for the spirit realm. All these sins piled up together. He was struggling with those sins to let that go. It was haunting him. I had my own issues to deal with. I was unequally yoked in a household also. My past tried to haunt me. And at the time that Anthony and I met each other, both of us were struggling to live holy. We got to a point in which Anthony left his household and my mom, my bio mom, allowed him to come to live with us, with me. And from our apartment, we would be looking to move out to an apartment of our own for Anthony and I just alone so that we could serve the Lord in holiness and no longer be unequally yoked. That was the deal. I was in a very difficult period of my life, struggling. And Anthony, being away from his unequally yoked household and environment, he was doing better than I was doing. He was a bit stronger spiritually than I was. And this is why he refers also to those times that we actually lived together with my bio mom in the apartment as the good times. He considers that good times and I know why. It is because he was stronger spiritually at the time than I was. He was better off. So God used him at the time to love me, encourage me, mentor me, build me up, stuff like that. And I truly loved him. But every day I was aware that his demons, he needed deliverance. These demons, they tried to hide. He himself fell into sin many times. The truth is, I have not known Anthony um, throughout the years living in victory over sin for a longer period of time. He always fell back into sin. I think his greatest achievement throughout the years was just a couple of weeks without sin. And we moved out and together we lived in an apartment just the two of us. And the deal was this. We were going to grow in holiness, grow in the Lord, not bring anything unholy into that household. We were not going to sin into that, in that household. 
we, you know, we just made this deal that God is first. And we're just going to work. And we worked a full-time job together. We became garbage men on the streets. And I left my former job. I was a fitness instructor, but the chapter was closed. God started to close the door there because he didn't want me in that environment anymore. And I had to be humble. We worked together all day, and the point was to use our finances, first of all, to support the Mighty Wind Ministry and preaching the gospel all over the world, and secondly, to use also those finances to make CDs. I was preparing CDs. I had written a book. Um, the prophecies spoken through Elizabeth and Elijah were on those CDs, and they were all translated into Dutch and everything, and there was much more on those CDs. And... Uh, we were going to preach on the streets, hand out those CDs, that was the plan. We were going to do that throughout the entire Holland. As time progressed, progressed, I should say, um, even though I had struggles, I started to progress spiritually, things got better for me, and I felt such a sense of freedom. And we had good times together. But the thing is this, Anthony's attitude towards me started to change. And he still has this thing in his own mind to this very day. What have you done for me, Sylvester? Except for false accusations and a little bit of prayer, this and that. He believes that I am actually against him and I want to withhold things from him in his own mind. Now you got to understand, when Anthony came to live with my bio mom and I, I gave him my bed to sleep in, and I slept on the floor. you got to understand that in the, the summer heat, tremendous heat, I was laying on a hard floor on, uh, uh, in, in the bedroom, and he was laying in my bed, because I wanted the best for him. I wanted him to be comfortable, okay? Once we moved out to our own apartment, you know, without even... Any second thought, I was like, you take the big room and the big two-person's bed. He, you know, I, I wanted him to have it. I, I always wanted the best for him. And I took the small room and I was, lit, I was sleeping in this, this little bed, and, but I was fine with that, you know. But Anthony's attitude started to change towards me. The devil told him that I wanted to not give him his fair share. So one time I was like pouring juice for the both of us after we came back from work. And according to him, and I didn't even, you know, realize, my glass was a bit fuller with juice. And he made a big deal out of that, and I saw how angry he, he, he got. And he left a hint during prayer that I was withholding things from him, and I wa that I wanted to give myself more, and that I didn't share with him. And I said in prayer, in his presence, I said, Lord, I said, I don't, want to, I don't even want to say this, but I gave this brother my own bed to sleep in, and I slept on the, on the hard floor, okay? When he came here, he got the best room. I wanted for him to have the best, and now, does he truly believe that I don't want to give him as much juice as I get? And immediately at that moment, Anthony looked at me and he said, I just got liberated from something, a demon got off his back, he said, and he felt free. So, he saw clearly that the devil had lied to him. But the thing is, these lies to set him up against me, and to actually think, for him to think that I was against him in some way, and wanted to withhold things from him, those lies they kept creeping back into him. His attitude started to change more and more, there was like an unexplainable anger in Anthony present and it was like I just had no clue why he had such anger and hatred we were working working together walking behind the truck loading the garbage you know pushing these garbage bin in and that was like you know it's an automatic thing and everything and when something didn't work out or anything he was just smashing the bin around hitting stuff and, and like I don't, I don't know, he was just very angry, unexplainable anger. And I looked at him and I thought by myself, not even the heathen we work with who do not know God, you know, who don't know better, they don't even act like he did. He was totally not setting an example. The more I grew in determination and in holiness, 
and I refused to sin in that household and I kept my vow and I kept my word, the more envy I began to see in Anthony in his eyes. I saw in his eyes envy, I saw hatred manifesting towards me, I just saw that he didn't really want to be in my presence, he was agitated by me. And it got so far that at one day he had actually temptations, he was struggling with temptations to kill me. At one day I was early home from work and I was supposed to pick him up, go to the job again with my car because I didn't have a license, I was supposed to pick him up and then come back home again. But the thing is, Anthony didn't leave a message or anything, so I just thought, well, I just go to, you know, the job, I'm gonna go pick him up. So, I went, it appeared Anthony just walked away from the job and had taken the bus, and he was gonna, just gonna take the bus home. It was a pretty long drive, you know, and, uh, and he had a pretty long walk home. So by the time I got home with my car, uh, a while later he came home, I was earlier home than he was. And I asked him, I said, Anthony, why didn't you wait for me? Do you really think it is too much for me, for you, you know, to, to, to pick you up from work? I said, uh, you know, this was the deal. And he came up with some really stupid story and excuses, and it was this demon of hatred manifesting towards me. He just did that to make me feel bad, like it's too much for you to, to pick me up. I can take care of myself. He just hated me. And I looked at him and said, really, Anthony? And I made it really clear with my attitude. And the things I said, like, you know, I, I, I see the hatred you have for me and I'm not buying your story. He turned around and he smashed the door really hard and he went to his bedroom. Didn't come out anymore. And I went to my, to my bedroom and I felt such peace of the Lord, Yah, on me. And I said, Lord, if I did anything wrong, let me know. But I see that this, that this young man, this brother, he hates me, he's angry with me, and I don't even know why. I believe it was the very next morning, we got up early, and I walked into him in the kitchen. He didn't want to look at me, and I saw the most severe demonic manifestation on his face. Of anger, hatred, rebellion, and murder. He didn't say anything. I didn't say anything to him either, I didn't know how to handle this. <laughs> so I went outside, I got my stuff, I usually waited in the car for him to come out. And so, when he got in the car, he saw that I was praying and I was rebuking and binding his demons away from me. And I had no clue why they were that strong. Still, I had no clue. And he got in the car and he got angry at me and he said, What is wrong with you? And I said, You dare to ask me that question? I said, What in the world is wrong with you? You know, why are you displaying such behavior towards me. And he was a little bit shook up with the way I responded and the anointing that was in me basically of the Holy Spirit got him to confess. And he looked me in the eyes and said the entire night he was tempted and pushed by demons who kept speaking to him and giving him that desire to grab a knife and stab me to death in my sleep. And I was like where does all this come from? And he told me, but I would never do that. I believe it was the same day, or maybe a few days after, that we were working together, we were walking behind the truck, loading garbage, and I was just happy doing my job. I wanted to do my job as if I did it for the Lord. And I saw again the same anger in his eyes and in his face. And I just knew he had fantasies about hurting me, and, and killing me. Suddenly he went up to the driver and he sat in the truck and I worked alone a little bit and uh, I saw that he was talking to the driver and he was crying. Later on I got into the truck and I said is everything okay? And then he started to confess that even behind the truck he had been contemplating killing me, hurting me. <laughs> and for what? Because I was happy. <laughs> Can you understand that? Your brother is doing fine, he's happy, he is praising the Lord, and you want, you desire to kill him for it. So, this continued, and the Lord started more and more revealing his sins to me. What he had been doing. At one time, I 
because this was like a downward spiral. I saw Anthony getting worse and worse, his behavior got worse. He wasn't really the man that I met anymore. I had my computer in the living room and we had an internet stick that we eventually bought and we had internet again. The Holy Spirit moved my hand. You know, I didn't even know what I was doing, but my hand moved and then I opened a folder that I would have never opened. And in that folder was all kinds of pornographic filth. And I thought by myself, what? I tried so hard to keep my computer clean and everything. And how, I was like, how does this pornographic junk get on my computer? And the Holy Spirit had shown me this because my hand just moved by itself. Yah wanted to show this to me. But I trusted and loved Anthony so much and I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt that I thought by myself, well, this must be <laughs> like an accident or something. I don't know. But I went to my room and I was angry because I didn't want to have anything to do with that filth. I didn't want to see that junk anymore. This is stuff I had repented of, okay? And as I started to pray, the Lord Yahushua and Yahweh, Abba Yahweh, they started telling to me, you got to confront him. And I felt the anger towards Anthony. So I prayed and I walked up to him and I said, Anthony, do you know how this pornography get caught on my computer? And he started to confess. Well, he started to confess to me that he had watched pornography. But the thing was, his heart was so demonized and so hardened, there was not even one sign of repentance. Not even a bit of repentance was there. He was so hardened. It explained to me why he had had certain behavior. During the night, as I was sleeping, I just sometimes found out that he was still at my computer in the middle of the night sitting in the dark, okay? He was just on the internet. And he also, you know, put the heater on and everything, and I always said, Anthony, why do you have the heater on at night? You know, I don't want the bill to get, you know, even more expensive than anything. I don't want to get more bills for the heat, but he just kept doing it, he didn't care. So, at night, he just crept in front of my computer to watch pornography all night, and he put on the heat, you know, to be warm at the same time. Or he would get up early in the morning to watch pornography in secret so he could shower and yet time after that to go to work. So he kept all this secret sin. And uh, at the time that all this was exposed, I said, Anthony, we need to pray, okay? And we, I got on my knees together with him. Him sitting on my left on his knees, me on my knees. And he started to talk the most hateful things about himself. He was so hard and there was no repentance whatsoever. But I wanted to push him to see the severity of his sins and that he needed to repent. And I remember this, and I forgot that, in my love for him, that the Bible says, lay no hands on, on any man suddenly. Okay? And I put my left hand on him as I was praying for him that he might have the grace of repentance. And as I put my hand on him, I felt life and energy flowing out of me into him. I felt like I was touching the spirit of death or something. He was like a vampire. And I was like, man, as I was praying, I was losing anointing, life, and energy. And so I was like, man, this guy, really, this is serious stuff. So I couldn't even pray as I touched him. And I felt worse after that. He did a little prayer, but there was no true repentance. But... I want always to give him the benefit of the doubt. Now listen to this. I never wanted to go to the Almighty Bit Ministry team or the leadership, Elizabeth, Elijah, Nico, uh, Mom, Catherine, Yah, and Adam, uh, to say, well, Anthony sinned. I wanted him to do that himself. So I didn't do that. And I encouraged him to repent. And I gave him my knowledge and understanding. And I said, Anthony, fight against this. Do this and this and that. Don't put yourself in a position to sin. Don't put yourself on a path that you used to walk in the past, that I used to walk in the past. Apply spiritual warfare. Flee from these sins. Weaken those demons. But as time passed by, there was more secrecy, secret sins. There was a kind of sneakiness in Anthony. And I just saw him deteriorate spiritually before my very eyes. And I felt like I couldn't trust him. I prayed a lot at the time because I felt like I needed the strength. I needed the Lord. 
As soon as we came home, many times I went to my room, sit in the dark all evening praying. And I just felt how much he hated it. He couldn't stand it. Because the holiness that I was trying to, to strive for, that convicted him and that agitated his demons. I also found out that his bio dad, the one who always enticed him to sin and provided him of sin, who knew that he had had an incestuous relationship with his sister and the guy didn't care, okay, these, these were sleeping together in, in the bedroom and he knew they had an incestuous relationship, the guy didn't care, but when Anthony got to a mighty wind, that is when he started to wage war against Anthony psychologically. His bio dad started to call him on the phone and Anthony was in touch on the internet with his biological sister and I thought this is a no-no, okay? He shouldn't be doing this. He kept falling into sin and he confessed nothing to our spiritual parents that were in touch with us, you know, how are you doing? Um, they were ministering unto us, helping us and everything. I remember one time Katrina called us on the phone and Anthony just wanted to make sure I couldn't get on the phone. He would do anything to, to take up the whole conversation and yet these sneaky eyes about him. He just wanted me to stay out of the way and he just told Katrina while well, Silla's busy. And I, th and I turned around and went to my bedroom and I thought by myself, Anthony, if this is really what you want, I said, I thought by, I, I believed in my heart, my God will vindicate me, he will expose your motives, I will talk to Katharina or to Elizabeth in, in his timing. But he would pull off sneaky things like that, so I wouldn't get in a position to expose his sin. So he was just on the phone acting as if he was doing well and so strong and goofing around, but he was... In, in blatant sin. Remember that Anthony during that time also was dabbling around you know in the spirit realm and the occult trying to travel us out of his body all kinds of things he had repented of okay until one day I decided it is enough our spiritual parents need to know about this junk this is this is this is you know not working anymore uh, but the house became so demonized because of his sins I was suffering tremendously um, under, what he, under what he was doing. Eventually, Sander, who also turned, to be, turned out to be an enemy later on against the ministry, who's president of YouTube, linked together with George, uh, Pastor George C., one of our main core enemies. And he moved in with us at the time. And again, the vow and the deal was to live holy. But Anthony and Sander, they just packed together because they were foolish. There was a certain kind of foolishness in them. Um, they were mocking sin in the household, even the first days that Sander was there. And I told Sander over and over again, when you come to this household, don't bring ungodly material. Don't bring sin into this household. We are here to live holy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he came, you gotta understand this. Sander sitting in front of the computer in the living room, in what is supposed to be a holy sanctuary for the Lord. And he turns on his computer, and he's on the internet, and he says, Porn! Porn! As if he's obsessed and wants to watch porn. That was supposed to be a joke. And Anthony immediately walked up to Sander, and he just, just joined in the mockery and the foolishness. And I couldn't believe it. Anthony started to, to you know, speak the name of a male porn star through the household, just as surely as Sander yelled the word porn through the household. And I was looking at them in anger. I mean, there was righteous anger. I could not believe the foolishness of these two and the lack of reverence and the lack of fear of God that they had. And I thought, how dare you bring this stuff into this household? And this happened not once, but this happened twice. I told them not to do it anymore, and they still did it. Yahweh started to speak to me one day when I was at work and he put it in my spirit, my son, you're going to tell them as for me and my household, we're going to serve Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ and live holy, we're going to clean our household. Yahweh started to give me wisdom and said you are going to be the leader of this household and I'm going to set up some rules, okay, for these two men that refused to obey him, that refused to fear him. The Lord led me to write our spiritual parents in the mighty ministry. This is going on. You gotta understand, I gave Anthony months the opportunity to confess his sins. 
and he wouldn't. He kept his sins secret. He wouldn't tell Elizabeth and Nico, he wouldn't tell Catherine or Adam, he wouldn't allow himself to be ministered unto, and he kept that relationship with his sister intact also over the internet. So they have this incestuous bond together that they were entertaining over the internet. And I remember him listening to worldly music like Shakira, and, and I asked him, brother, why are you listening to that music? Later on he confessed to me that it reminded him of his sister. I just couldn't believe it. He also used for his, just to explain to you how he was entertaining sin, on the desktop of his computer he was using a background from Thailand from a balcony that he used to sit on to smoke marijuana. In an, in an apartment apparently where it also had been uh, or a hotel or whatever it might have been, I don't know, where he also used to sin with his sister. So he was entertaining that stuff. He wanted to be reminded of that. And so I wrote up all these things that had been happening and that he refused to repent, he refused to confess. I wrote that to the spiritual parents. The very next day, a prophecy came forth. It was... Uh, January the 6th, 2009, and that prophecy became Prophecy 106. Both Sandra and Anthony, they got a major spanking and rebuke from heaven for what they had dared to do in that household. The prophecy was called, Clean Your House. The prophecy that became public on the Mighty Ministry website, a lot of stuff was taken out because it was so personal and the name Sander Anthony was taken out, taken out to save them embarrassment and humiliation in front of the entire world. Okay, But they got a major spanking and I got like an encouragement from the Lord. I got this blessing and the Lord said to me how difficult it is what I had done and that Anthony had better be thankful of me and thank me for exposing his sin that he refused to tell. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to be in this video or another video, but I'm going to show you the excerpts of the prophecy that were never made public, that were for Anthony. In that prophecy, the, one of the thickest roots of Anthony's evil became apparent. And that was because of his incestuous bond with his sister, that he kept intact, spiritually speaking, the soul tie on the internet, is what also was also like a main factor in him committing all these other sins because he strengthened the incestuous spirit, the spirit of uncleanness and fornication and all these other spirits they also strengthened all these other demons of Anthony. You gotta understand that he had a lot of demons, I told this before, which includes the occult, which includes fascination for the occult and spirit realm, fascination for demons, fornication, lust, pornography, and even pedophilia. Okay. Anthony in that prophecy got a last chance. Choose you this day whom you are going to serve. After that prophecy was spoken and we got off the phone and Anthony and Sandler got the assignment from God, from heaven, to clean up their house to clean the physical household and to clean the spiritual household. You know what? Anthony went to his room and from that day on especially there was a lot of bitterness in his heart towards me because he considered me to be a snitch in his heart for the fact that I had exposed his sin. Sander, right after that prophecy, we got off the phone, he went on his computer to watch X Factor. So much for fear of the Lord, okay? The Lord just has rebuked you, and a God-fearing man would be on his knees in tears and repentance and everything. And what does Sander do? He goes to watch X Factor. I, w I went up to him and I said, Sander, is this how you show reverence and fear for the Lord? By watching X Factor after such a word came forth? And he looked up to me and he said, well, it was kind of like hard on me and I'm just trying to... Uh, let it sink in and relax a little bit. Time went on. I gave Anthony the benefit of the doubt. There was a little period in which he apparently was doing a bit better. He tried to avoid that sin. I didn't really understand what exactly his last chance meant that he was given by the Lord. Did it mean his salvation? Did it mean being the bride of Yeshua? 
Did it mean being kicked out of the house? I didn't know. Very soon after, Anthony started displaying really weird behavior again. And it only got worse. There was this unexplainable anger again, which could be explained because I, I just knew the patterns. I knew we must be in sin. And these demons were so strong again, hatred, murder, uncleanness, foolishness. There was like no anointing on him. The occult spirits and everything. And uh, one day these things got so bad that the Lord spoke a rebuke through my mouth and everything. And still he would not confess that at night, in secret, he was again watching pornography. Sander one time caught him on his computer watching pornography when he walked in and Anthony click, quickly clicked it away but Sander didn't want to believe it. he gave him the benefit of the doubt because we loved Anthony. But Anthony had become like an open portal to hell in that household. That household became so demonized that Sander and I both suffered. Sander started to do a bit better at least he was not committing any sin and he was careful. Yet he didn't really like me because I exposed the sin at one time. And I always felt that tension between us. He felt a lot better with Anthony's presence because he wasn't convicted by Anthony. But in any case, I loved Sander. I loved Anthony. I tried, I tried, I tried to help them. I tried to set an example. I tried to get them together. You know, boys, let's pray together. Let's, let's seek the Lord, you know. Are you walking holy? Try to minister unto them. I wasn't perfect, but I tried to set an example. And so, um, at one day, the demonic infestation in that household got so bad that I remember it was like Sander at night. And, you know, you got to understand, we, we had to wake up early in the morning, Anthony and I, because we were, you know, early out on the streets collecting garbage. And, uh... Sander, in the middle of the night, he went in, to the bathroom, he took a bath, and these pipes in that apartment building were so old, and, and so the pipes, they made a lot of noise through the entire apartment building, and, that's, and I couldn't believe it, in the middle of the night. And so, I needed my sleep, and on top of that, the people in the entire building were being, you know, could be woken up because of that sound, and I went to stand in the bathroom, I said, Sander, why are you taking a bath in the middle of the night? Do you hear that noise? This is waking up everybody in the building, including us. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry, but I got attacked in my sleep, and oh, I feel so defiled. Because of Anthony's sins, Sander got hit with a sexual spirit, and he had had a wet dream, and he felt so defiled because he didn't want to commit sexual sin. This is the way we suffered due to Anthony's sins. I just felt such demonic activity and Anthony did not care. He didn't care that he was putting us in danger. He didn't care that we suffered. He didn't care that, that he brought in the demons. All he cared about is having a sin and nobody knowing and, and, and getting away with it. Keeping it a secret. His eyes were so dark because top of the sexual sin there was fascination for the occult he was entertaining and he was looking up everything he could about the M guy. I'm not going to speak the name. Because this name holds so much demonic antichrist power. The man who basically promotes this, who is regarded by many as a John the Baptist of the New Age movement. Okay. And Anthony was just finding clips of this guy preaching his new age garbage from this thinking reptilian and he, w he was just playing that, he just took it to the kitchen, he just listened to it he was seeking occult powers, there was like a certain uh, certain words, a certain curse that the end guy once spoke to put a curse on someone and that person fell down very hard on the ground with a thud and uh, Anthony spoke these words just for fun this, this occult curse that this AC, this Antichrist M guy, had spoken. And Anthony was just entertaining this stuff. And his eyes became so dark that even Sandra looked at him and said, Anthony, man, your eyes are so dark. You look creepy, man. I remember during this time period that uh, we were sitting on a dining room table and uh, Anthony was kneeling on the floor and we were all supposed to pray together and worship the Lord. 
and Sandra and I were like really pouring out our hearts to the Lord. And as I was pouring out my heart to the Lord and worshiping Him and lifting up my voice, again, I could see Anthony, the side of his face, he was just full of fury and angry. He couldn't stand it, okay, that I was praising and worshiping the Lord like I was doing. And as much as I was in the anointing, I saw his mouth move and I heard him say something under his breath. And little did I know that he cursed me under his breath. From that moment, he opened his mouth, a demon jumped on me, and the demon tormented me for two consecutive days before it would finally break off of me. And it was a demon of blasphemy who would speak blasphemies in my mind, and I would feel guilty about it because it would accuse me as if I had said it. So here's a guy who cannot stand me worshiping the Lord, and he curses me under his breath to put a demon of blasphemy on me. Now at this time, as Anthony was committing all these abominations and sins against the Lord in this household of ours that was supposed to be holy, and he had been given his last chance, he just chose to not confess anything. He chose to keep things in secret, to not contact anybody in the Mighty Wood Ministry to tell him about what he was really doing. He always wanted everybody to think in this ministry that everything was fine. As he continued on this path of rebellion, God struck him with a disease, and his body became full of a disease, and he, not, not only did I see his health deteriorating before my very eyes, but he started bleeding on the inside, his insides were bleeding, and this guy started to bleed from his rectum, from his behind. So he couldn't go to the bathroom without losing much blood, okay? It, it got so bad that he sometimes didn't dare to go to the bathroom. As he got so sick from all of this, he started to confess to me what he had been doing, what had happened, because he was afraid. And I remember going with him to, 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 to work, but he was so miserable, he couldn't work. He had to be brought home. I went to work. And I came home, and he was uh, sitting in bed. He was looking miserable. And I walked up to him and said, Anthony, will you confess to me everything you have done? And he started to cry. And I still remember him sitting up. And he said, I don't know, brother, why I sometimes do what I do. I have committed against sin. And he, he started at least to confess that he had done pornography and stuff like that. And I had compassion on him, because... I remind you again, I loved Anthony, okay? I always wanted the best for him. And I sat on his bed and I took him and I laid his head on my shoulder and I allowed him to cry. And I wanted to take care of him. And immediately I went to the supermarket and I got him fruit and veggies and, and something to drink. But I wanted to take care of him, wanted to get his vitamins and everything. And uh, I got home. And I prepared stuff for him, and he was just laying in bed. And, you know, he wouldn't even eat or, or really drink anything that I prepared for him. I don't know if he was too proud or something. In any case, he didn't really do it. But I tried to take care of him. All of these things he simply does not want to remember. What have you done for me, Sylvester? He has always believed that I'm a snitch who wants his downfall while I was really looking out for his soul. So again, this guy needed prayer. And, as he refused to contact this ministry, I was like, I have to do it again. I, was, I didn't know what was going to happen. I contacted Elizabeth Elijah, Nico, and Catherine, and I said, this is what's happening. This guy needs spray. Insides bleeding everything, bleeding from the rectum. He, he's full of a disease, and we don't know what to do. So, Elizabeth and Nico called again on the phone. And I remember God loved him so much that even after committing all these abominations and no repentance inside until he was struck with the disease, that he was given another last chance. And if he was, would screw up one more time, then he was going to get kicked out of the house. Sandra and I had been suffering for months under what he was doing, okay? And I knew most likely he was not going to change, and I thought, more suffering is coming. I was already prepared. 
I didn't know if I was really relieved when I heard that he was supposed to stay at our home because I did not really believe in him anymore. I didn't believe in him anymore, in his intentions and everything. And uh, he got a second, last chance. People in this ministry, only the most trusted one at the time and the leadership particularly were praying for him. After that second chance, Despite bleeding from the rectum and everything, Anthony pulled himself together and somehow was able to work with me and somehow was able to harden his heart and commit the same sins again, despite his disease. And he fell into sin again, he only went deeper. And I didn't know him really anymore. This is this guy who I once loved so much who hates me for looking after his soul, for goodness sake. And he despises me. He despises my worship. He despises my prayers. While he was in secret sin, I, because he believes that being holy is just maybe one day of the week or two, overcoming sin and then doing your prayers. And to him, that's living holy. And I remember one time in the morning, I heard him doing his prayers in his bedroom and the Lord was so displeased with his prayers that his very voice hurt my spirit. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't hear it. I, I didn't want to hear it. I was like, man, you are in all these abominations and you're just praying to the Lord doing communion, drinking of the cup in remembrance of Yeshua's blood, you know, doing spiritual warfare while you have no authority because you are in sin. The demons of fornication, lust, uncleanliness, homosexuality and pedophilia became so strong in him that he at one time confessed to me that he couldn't look at a child without having sexual fantasies. So this was a this was a man who he didn't, he didn't just have a sexual problem or, or a lust addiction but this was a uh, this was a man with pedophile tendencies. At the time Sanders children came over Two of his three children came over, once every two weeks, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And they came over for a weekend. Sandra took care of him, was supposed to take care of him. And, uh, and, and it was a boy and a girl came over. And I knew that Anthony was not able to look at a child without thinking about sex. But that was coming straight from God through Elizabeth was a warning for, for Sander not to leave his children alone with Anthony or allow Anthony to physically take care of him in such as, you know, uh, bringing them to the bathroom to pee or, or washing them and stuff like that. This is stuff that Anthony had been doing before I really knew that he had the spirit of pedophilia so strong. Because again, we always loved Anthony, we wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt, and when he said he was living holy and wasn't sinning, we wanted to believe him. So, Sandra was warned not to let his children alone with Anthony, or allow him to physically, especially, well, physically, <laughs> to take care of him. Okay. Now, more about that in a little bit. Anthony, at the time, was creating situations with the spirit of sneakiness. He was sneaky. And he created situations that he thought by himself, well, well, right now we're living with the three of us so I can be more careless with my money. He would spend his money on useless things and basically at the end of the month he wouldn't have enough. But he knew, what can we do? Sandra and I had to help him out. Sandra helped him pay his bills. Sandra helped him financially to be able to come up with his rent money. And it's like, you know, here Anthony, I help you. Oh no, I can't do that, you know, because he wanted to sound noble and upright as possible. But all the while he had created the situation on purpose and he somehow, I believe he got a kick out of that to put us in such positions. He felt like he was in control, he was in power. There came a time that I was fasting. There were certain things in my life and in my character that I want to change for the Lord. You got to understand that despite 
the difficulties that, that, that we went through due to these situations with Anthony and the temptations and the demonic attacks and the increased spiritual warfare my determination for the Lord and to be holy and to preach the gospel and to help this ministry and to work and do everything God had told me to do was too strong. No matter what the temptation was, I refused to sin. The Bible says some things only change by fasting and praying. And the Lord led me on a fast, came back from work and started the same evening. One day, fruit and veggies fast. The other day, nothing except water. And that fast was very important. I spent the entire time in my room praying, reading the Bible, doing all kinds of things with the Lord and prayer, praising everything. And I heard what was going on in the household. Sandra's children were over. And Sandra, despite the warnings that Elizabeth had given him, that this man, Anthony, has pedophile tendencies. He is tempted with sexual lust when he looks at children. He cannot look at anybody without uh, stripping them naked in his imagination. That's what he told me. He allowed Anthony to take his little son alone to the bathroom, pull his pants down, and I heard Anthony say, Here, hold your little wiener. I, I just, I still cannot believe it. Sander did not give heed to that warning. As a matter of fact, he didn't even believe it. He just blindly, you know, had faith that Anthony would never do such things. That same weekend, there was another situation in which Anthony took his children, or maybe specifically his son, I do not clearly remember, but what I do clearly remember is this, is that the rule was don't show these children wrong stuff on the internet. He would play occult games in front of him uh, with alien shooting and stuff like that. And, and I said to Anthony, is, is this how you want to feed these children? Aren't we supposed to teach them about the Lord and I find you are playing occult games in front of them? And again, I heard all this stuff going on in my room. And he was showing his children, specifically the little boy, like occult things on, on, on the internet opening that child up to demons and stuff like that. And that child, you know how children are, especially if they're a little bit rebellious. Oh, I want to play this, I want to play that. And Anthony just, <laughs> he responded to that child and he, he was like, man, it's always what you want. It's always what you want. Man, I'm not taking this anymore. You know, and he was that serious. He was talking like that to that child. The way he treated these children, the way he would look at these children, the way he spoke to those children, I knew that it was only a matter of time that if these children would be allowed uh, alone with Anthony in the future, that worse things were going to happen. I believe he would have harmed these children emotionally, physically, and then not to mention sexually. Okay, And it was already happening because I believe that there are some secrets that have never been fully revealed, but may the Lord reveal them, okay? Because there's always such a grieving that we have felt in the Spirit about these situations. Anthony, late at night, I said to him, let's go for a walk. I just wanted him to confess his sins. He wasn't confessing anything as usual. The spirit of uncleanness was so strong on him, we just went outside, went to the park. His whole behavior, mentality was just foolishness. There was nothing holy about this young man. And we went to a bench and we just sat there. And I said, Anthony, if you are in sin, now is the time to confess. You cannot go on like this anymore. I said, I say, the demon so strong in you. I said, uh... I reminded him of all the consequences, all the damage it had done. I said, I don't believe that you are not in sin. I said, you have to confess. You have to repent from those sins. And he lied. He kept it a secret. For a short while during our conversation, he refused to confess. But again, the anointing of the Holy Spirit had me speak words through him to break through to the real Anthony that was somewhere there still. And um, at the moment he 
started contemplating, uh, confessing something to me, we heard from afar, somewhere in the forest, in the dark, nobody was around, we heard a man's voice blaspheming, God. And I looked, and I looked at him and I said, see Anthony, this is how important it is. Those demons are cursing and blaspheming God because they don't want you to confess what you have done. He started confessing to me, usual stuff, sexual sin. I gotta give him that, he at least confessed that. After that, he knew I was going to contact Elizabeth Elijah again, and Nico and Katharina to tell him that he has been in sin again. And, uh, but he wanted me to believe and to relate to them that he had truly repented. So he put on this act to look good. I remember one time he came, came home from work and he said, man, I'm having such a great time with the Lord. And I just looked at his face and I thought by myself, no, you're not. You are a fully in sin. You're putting on an act. He said, well, I'm going to cycle with the Lord today a little bit. I'll, I'll be back. The sky was as blue as could be, and it was a hot summer day. From the moment he went outside, rain clouds started to appear and it rained down on him. <laughs> and within a matter of minutes, he came back into the house. From a, a, a warm summer day to suddenly rain out of nowhere. And once he got into the house, the rain stopped, it was gone. And I said to him, Anthony, if you are right with the Lord, if you are having favor and a good time with the Lord, then why are you cursed in this manner that you go outside and it starts raining? This was like a warning. At the time, Sandra also came home and I started to say to Sandra, Sandra, why did you allow your children along with Anthony? First thing he expressed was his unbelief. Anthony would never do such a thing. Now at this point, for Anthony's soul's sake, again, and for Sandra's soul's sake, for that matter, I already had relayed everything, again, because they wouldn't do it. As a matter of fact, they would do any, anything to cover up their sins. I had relayed everything already to Nico and Elizabeth, and to Katharina. And so, I knew that these two men were in for a major butt-whooping from heaven. Soon after, Elizabeth, Elijah, and Nico called on the phone late in the evening, and I knew a prophet's fire was going to be kindled against them, because I could already feel it in my own spirit. By the time the phone call took place, Satan had hit me with physical illness, so that I couldn't speak, I didn't have a voice anymore. So they could barely hear me talking on the phone. I was trying my best to make myself be heard and understood, okay? Because the devil knew I was going to be the only one on that, in that phone conversation who was going to, you know, speak the truth about what had been happening. Because here you have the guy, Sander, who, despite the warning he got from heaven through Elizabeth, is leaving specifically his young son alone with a potential pedophile to be physically taken care of. Okay? Then you have Anthony, full of the spirit of rebellion, murder, lust, all the way to pedophilia, who's trying to cover everything up and act as if everything is fine. Okay? And I just knew that these two, they were not going to speak the truth on the phone. They were going to try to do anything they could to try to twist the truth to make themselves look better. And actually try to make Elizabeth and Nico believe that things weren't that bad at all. And so... By the devil trying to steal my voice, he tried to pull off that trick. But the thing is, Nico and Elizabeth already had received in their spirits by God, in prayer, a witness and a confirmation that the things that I had relayed to them, just as usual, <laughs> like in the months before, was accurate and they could feel God's fire within. Guess what? When they started to ask Anthony and Sander, did this and this and this happen? How did it happen? Sander was trying to twist the truth. He was trying to deny. He was actually trying to convince them that he hadn't left his children alone with Anthony at all. And Anthony was making up all kinds of, you know, you know stuff. And he tried to cover up his sins. And I felt the anger kindled within me. And I took that phone and I said, they are not telling you the truth. Okay. 
I said, I have fasted in this house, and during that fast, I have heard everything that was going on in this house. And I said, I told him everything. And at this time, Prophet Elizabeth Elijah got the anointing stirred up of the, of the Holy Spirit. And she started to rebuke them. But it wasn't just her rebuke, it was the Lord's rebuke. Because Sandra was flat out lying. While he, this was a matter about his children, and even about that he would lie to cover up his own behind. And then Anthony, again, just as in times past, even though being rebuked on the phone, there was no sign of repentance whatsoever. On his face, in his, in his you know, body language, in his attitude, he was just like, he was just numb to all this. And uh, the only thing I saw was agitation because the truth had gotten out. And, you know, just as he already considered me to be a snitch, now I was a snitch in the eyes of Sander and in the eyes of Anthony. So, and I remember the Lord speaking through Elizabeth's mouth to Anthony, and, and, and I knew it was a prophecy, and she said, You will spit blood, Anthony. He already had had the disease as a punishment for his sins. But in the future, there would be another disease coming, and he would be spitting blood. And he was going to have to live on his own. He was going to have to find an apartment. Sander was per had been partaking in the fast, so that Anthony could stay. But can't you imagine that? He wanted a poor of the hell in that household to remain. And why? Because he liked Anthony better than he liked me, because Anthony didn't convict him, and I did. Okay, so Anthony left, Sandra was blubbering like a baby, and uh, I, I said to Sandra, I said, why are you, are, are you crying like this? I said, this man has done all these abominations on purpose, after all of his chances, and you want him to stay? And so, from that day forward, my relationship with Sandra was just broken. There was not much left of it. He didn't trust me anymore, didn't like me anymore. He had, a, had this ice-cold stare towards me, because in these guys' eyes, I was a snitch. I got Anthony kicked out of the household, and I got revealed that Sander had left his child alone with a potential pedophile. So, this was about the end of my relationship with Sander. Soon after that, he would leave the household, and Anthony had found a place of his own due to the Lord's grace, being given another chance to try to live holy while being on his own. These are the things that I wanted to share with you in this part one testimony of mine, my story of how Anthony became king. There's going to be a second part, and I'm going to tell you what my relationship with Anthony was after he was kicked out, all the way to when I got married, what was our relationship with Anthony, what happened, why did we leave. But for all of you that are watching, and I'm talking specifically to those that have maybe even consider it, well, let's listen to this guy, Anthony, maybe he has some truths. My purpose with this testimony is to let you know that you have no excuse, as the truth is out due to this testimony, to believe Anthony's lies. Because we're talking here about a man who never wanted to be delivered from sin, who never wanted to be delivered from demons. And yes, Sylphus, you know that I have the gift of seeing the demons. Who would lie, cheat, steal, who would be sneaky to cover up his sins, okay? Who refused to confess uh, the abominations that he has done, who has been dabbling in the occult, trying to travel outside of his body, trying to gain occult power, you know, and I can go on and on and on, uh, hating me, coveting from me, wanting to kill me, all kinds of stuff. The Lord has confirmed to me recently that it is only because of Yah, Yahweh and Yahushua, God Almighty, that Anthony was not be able to kill me, was not able to kill me. You, you have this guy here who has got every art against him. And the things that I have spoken of in this video to give you proof, I have video footage of his, of his activities, of his behavior, of, 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 you know, of his emails, I have screenshots and everything. So, 
We're going to put this out, and nobody is going to have any excuse to believe Anthony's lies about me, or about the ministry, or about Elizabeth Elijah. You are looking at a liar, okay? When I show you this picture right here, this is a liar. Look at how I got to know him, full of the Holy Spirit, and this is how he is now. Does this look like a man who got deliverance, or who is upright and sincere, in heart, has a heart after the Lord, is the Holy Spirit shining forth from His countenance? And don't give me this stupidity, Anthony, or Cain, I should say, about, well, it was a mighty wind's fault, because I didn't get deliverance.